So after a stint in the city, staying with a few friends of mine, thank you very much, um, I decided that the temperatures being overnight predicted around mid-30s, yeah, I can do this. So the question was, where can I do this? It was an open mic in Tinley Park that I went down to and checked it out and was just, no, no, <laughs> this is not a good idea. So I didn't do that. Earlier that day, I had called Sam's Club, and I didn't know that Sam's Club closed at 8.30 at night when I did this, and talked to this manager, and he was really nice. He said, yeah, no problem, um, but if you get a ticket, it's on you. Okay, well, fine. So I um, decided to back up my little Sam's Club plan with the Walmart plan, and I called the Walmart in Orland Park, and they said pretty much the same thing. Um, so I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to get the van set up with my little curtain on the inside and just go for it. And so I stop at a Kmart, and I start setting that up, and there's a friggin' cop like about 20 feet away from me in his car just scoping me out. So I pretend that I've, get a, you know, I've gotten a phone call <laughs> on my phone, and... Um, then I just drive away, and he doesn't follow, fortunately. Probably found somebody else to harass, engaged in benign activities. So, I thought, Sam's Club, it closes at 8.30 at night. You know, I really don't want to get a ticket for vagrancy. So, I end up going to Walmart. And I, um, I get set up. I don't, I, I don't use the curtain. I just use a black sheet over myself, and I park a little ways away by a couple cars that look like they've been there a little while. And I lie down, I start to shut my eyes, and within 10 minutes, I hear a car driving very slowly by me. I look out, another friggin' cop. So, <laughs> so I decided what is my next option? Well, my next option, since there's a ton of hotels and motels around here, is I'm going to call the cheapest one I can find that isn't absolutely zero rated. So I did, and I uh, was told 50 bucks. Um, 50 bucks and I'll miss, but I said, okay, I'll do it. And I went there and, uh, <laughs> wow, certainly not the worst place I've ever stayed at because I've done an awful lot of traveling and I used to be in a rock band, but damn, a uh, real interesting place. So, um, at this, uh, motel, um, as soon as I saw that they, uh, not only rent by the evening, but in four hour blocks, I thought, you know, uh, I should probably be prudent. This is a bag full of bags. These are tall kitchen trash bags. And what I do with these when I stay at a hotel room, especially <laughs> especially the cheap ones, is I will actually put pretty much everything in these instantly and tie them off at the top. And I will put them on a raised surface. Rubbing alcohol and paper towels, I will pretty much wipe down everything. I will wipe down all the surfaces and all the handles. And I like to take baths, so I will actually wipe down the bathtub if it looks at all non-skanky. Reason why I do this, um, frankly, hepatitis. You can get hepatitis from a salad bar if somebody didn't wash their hands. And, um, you know, at some of these lesser expensive hotels, you know, can't really trust in the average random stranger's personal hygiene. So, toilet handles, toilet seat... Uh, shower handle, um, pretty much all the surfaces I'll rub down with this. Takes only a few minutes. Flip flops, I always bring a pair of these to use in the shower and just walking around on the floor in general. It's nice that they're keeping the place up. <laughs> it's this early in the morning. Um, I, I do want to make mention that I got no kicks in room 66. <laughs> Although, when I came in here, you know, besides the four-hour thing that I saw in the office, I did, um, I did notice that as I was scrolling through the, uh, the cable channels that the first two were porn. And, you know, not the soft focus sort of, you know, like, like kind of cuddly, fuzzy porn, but like the really gritty, nasty porn. Um, so I watched Harry Potter. It looks like this place, the launching pad, is uh, down for the count, but uh, 
they still have this guy. <laughs> so, I guess uh, a little bit of uh, Midwest iconography. Um, still, uh, still hanging out in Wilmington, Illinois. Uh, I guess every small town along Route 66 has their <laughs> has their goofy iconography, and this is uh, the one that belongs to Braidwood, Illinois. And uh, same fine uh, ice cream establishment has these uh, these guys on the side too. So the uh, <laughs> can't tell if this one's in business, although you know it's midwinter, so I can't imagine that. Uh, uh, it being open at this juncture, but uh, looks like this one is actually still going. So I'm in this town of uh, Pontiac along Route 66, and there's this uh, war museum. And unlike everything else on Martin Luther King Day, um, it seems to be open, so I guess we're gonna go in here. Hello. I'm just being a tourist. <laughs> Is this okay? Go right ahead. Oh, all right, thanks. Where are you from? Well, originally Detroit, but I live in a yurt in the woods of southwest Wisconsin. I'm kind of heading to warm places for the winter. So. Good. I can be ready at the four o'clock. <laughs> You know, probably New Orleans and Florida. Oh, so Florida's is this? Got some kind of funky weather too. I think. Yeah, everything's kind of going haywire. Um, is this your place? I work here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly is here? What am I looking at? And this is the Route 66 Museum. Okay. Are you camera shy? No. Hi. Um, you are. <laughs> What's your name? Barry. Okay. Um, it starts there in Chicago, goes around the entire mm -hmm. perimeter of the room, and ends up over along the wall there with St. Louis. Oh, okay. So it's just the Illinois part. You're more than welcome to take photos or right. whatever. And yeah. then upstairs, there's a war museum. Is that open today? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Staff with veterans, a 1940s display of a house with furniture, toys, various things, plus five rooms of photos like those that were taken well, on 66. Okay. So there's several things in here. This used to be where they parked uh, fire trucks. Okay. And then as you go upstairs, you will see there's jail cells up there. Oh, neat. Plus, um, they put me up for the evening, you know, and <laughs> for old time's sake. Well, if you were living in the 1940s, your, uh, your house might look like this. Probably not like that, but... Uh... Oh, look at that. Oh, this is so neat. <laughs> Tape. Wow. Tape? The 1940s house. <laughs> Cute. Wow. This is a cute little place. I'm glad I stopped in here. Oh, I want to. I want to. I can't. I really can't. I guess I just can't. Ah. So we're going to go up to uh, 
and go up to the third floor where the war museum is. Okay, so we're on the third floor, which I guess I could have just walked up to. And this is the Livingston County War Museum, covering, uh, covering I guess, a span from World War I to Afghanistan. Because if there's something that we human beings are good at, it's this kind of stuff. Definitely a major history of the uh, wardrobe changes of war, I suppose. World War One. World War One doesn't get a whole lot of love, I noticed. Um, everybody's all about World War Two, but. Um, but if you ever get a chance in Kansas City, there's the World War One Museum, which is actually a pretty amazing place to go. Um, not to take anything away from here, but uh, <laughs> I think it's the only the only World War One museum in the country, or something like that. But uh, worth taking a look at um, if you're into that sort of thing. Yeah, really neat. Yeah, you know, this is if you're if you're traveling on the Route 66, this is definitely a, a, a destination. It's kind of neat. Spent a little bit of time here, meticulously looking over things. I'm just kind of doing a a walk by, but uh, neat place. Overall, um, I didn't want to engage the people down there because I figured that would take like uh, two hours out of my trip. So, but yeah, nifty, nifty place. Ooh, I guess uh, not done. There is a photo gallery. And It's kind of um, kind of amazing how we treat our history in this country. We kind of uh, just sort of let it rot. Another wing to the uh, photo museum. Yeah, so a great little place, and uh, I recommend doing a hidden treasure. <laughs> this is what happens when you just just randomly stuff into things that look a little bit curious to you. Um, so yeah, delightful place. If you're uh, passing by Pontiac, Illinois, uh, come check this place out. It's really neat. Well, this is the uh, closest I've come to normal. And it's, uh, it kind of lives up to its name. It's sort of a um, place full of subdivisions and um, stuff, but maybe there's something else going on around here. Okay, well, this is normal, actually. 
Apparently, uh, before I was just bordering on normal, which uh, I guess I'm used to by now. And um, <laughs> I must be a college town because I see two different record stores and then a comic store between them. So I'm uh, kind of curious. Well, this is a place called uh, Shockwaves. <laughs> so how's it going? All right, man. <laughs> cool. Have a good day. Thanks. Well, this is, uh, <laughs> this is, uh, uh, pleasant on the eyes. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Hi. How much? Pardon me? Looking for anything special? No, I'm just kind of kind of traveling and checking out small businesses oh, and, nice. and, and making video well, stuff of them. Have at it. Thank you. This is pretty, we've kind of going for a sensory overload, although we're minus the music at the moment. Yeah. You can smell the incense and see all the imagery. All right. Are you the <laughs> proprietor? My wife and I are so okay. true blue Americana mom and pop. <laughs> <laughs> also, we're here, you know, manning the cashiers and the counters and all that jazz. Wow, it's a nifty place. Orders, we're blessed. Well, I lived in Chicago for seven and a half years, but I haven't been down this way. This is neat. This place has a rich history. It was opened up when my wife and I were just young kids. It opened up in 1968. No kidding, it's been going that long? Yeah. Well, good for you, well, anyway, man. It's 48th year. Yeah. Slice of cool. history. Uh, <laughs> one of the first hippie, hippie, one of the last. <laughs> wow, wonderful. No that is great. Hey, oh. sure this was a great album. Product are 3D tapestries. <laughs> so like these tapestries, mm -hmm. might as well experience. Oh really? <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna pop out at you the 3D yeah. tapestries. These are and oh wow, just they are truly 3D tapestries. Yes, Check they this are, out. Huh? Well, you can't see this at home. Uh, and uh, you <laughs> know, if you just walk around with them, it's fun to see them on. And then if you go into the black light room, you can black light. it's always fun to go in there. Oh wow. With those. So we have to find fun things to do while we're up here. Oh, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> Takes you back, you know. Yeah, it really and, does. And if you just look at things, things just pop out that you know they're I think red pops out really well. Oh, these are neat. <laughs> yeah, we were having trouble getting beaded curtains, so we got the 3D tapestry. <laughs> <laughs> Up in this store here, we have 30 different local artists. Oh, that's you know, fantastic. You know, all of this jewelry up in here, these wraps, these pins, our hula hoops. We have incense, our, all of our tie-dye hats and shirts. We got tie-dye candles. Wow. Plus the glassware made by local people. So like I say, we have over 30 different artists. Uh, oh, that's fantastic. Artists, so, you know? so normal, the downtown, basically the walking area for the... For, is like this block and that one kind of beyond yeah. the... Yeah, and see, the, the quad is down there like two more blocks is the yeah. middle of the ISU. Now, believe it or not, we have students come in here like even this year that's been going to ISU for three years have never been in Mother Murphy's. And we're like, <laughs> where have you been? I said, you live west of Main Street. And I'm like, that's correct. I said, that's because you get to the quad to your, your classes, but you don't come this way. Yeah. And we're open seven days a week to eight o'clock, five days of them, you know, so it's like we're easy to get to. Apparently the two record stores are people that used to work at Mother Murphy's, so we're going to check these out. Waiting Room Records. Hello.
Well, this is refreshing. They have, um, they have, like, things titled <laughs> here as opposed to just G. <laughs> it's like a nice selection of fairly obscure titles. Prices are, prices seem to be downright reasonable. All right, now let's check out the other one. And this is North Street Records. Hello. I don't think I've ever been to a town where you have two record stores practically next to each other. <laughs> it's neat. Final fanatics. That's it, yep. You can have to take it off the turntable. Yeah, we'll see. I don't want to leave here without it. Thanks for playing it for me. That was fun listening while I was looking. Well, neat. Seen that a pretty good selection here. It's a great selection. Yeah. Thank you. Let's see what else we have in this uh, in the town of Normal. Yeah, totally wasn't expecting all this coolness. So basically, it seems like it's kind of this block, which is the uh, you know kind of the hipster haven. Uh, looks like there's a little bit of stuff around the uh, little roundaboutish thing over there. So we'll take a walk over there and see what they got. So a little bit of retail over on this end. Got uh, some restaurants, a coffee house. Have this uh, Discover More store, the Children's Discovery Museum store. All right, so it's a little children's museum in the middle of normal Illinois. Okay, so if you have kids and you want them to be smart, this is a place to come. Pretty cool little town, I guess, you know, cozy. Few things to do, few places to eat. On to the next uh, small Midwestern burg. One thing I'm gonna say about driving in normal Illinois is uh, they've got the head of a bird all over their signs and all over their roads. <laughs> and, and it's kind of shaped sort of like an arrow. Um, so be careful, because I almost made a couple wrong turns because of big bird head um, being omnipresent everywhere.